Oh, well, look at why are they putting the fence up? Look how awful that is of the fence. They're putting this fence up. No, I, I want to take this a couple of steps further here. I want you to think about a couple of things. First of all, not only did they put the fence up, they've put guards around it now. There are more guards around the World War II memorial to keep people off it than there were at Benghazi. They, there's no reason to guard that unless you're trying to inflict pain. So they're guarding a private memorial, something that they have nothing to do with. They have nothing to do with. They've closed it off with barricades. Then when the barricades were taken down for 90-year-old World War II veterans, they went and they got fences. So they are trying intentionally to inflict pain on 90-year-old World War II greatest generation Americans. Here's the signpost that I want you to see. What politician ever in the history of America ever would intentionally inflict pain on a 90-year-old? Would intentionally inflict pain on World War II greatest generation heroes? These are heroes. These are, these are the people we have lined up. The president never lined up because he never went to a Memorial Day parade in his life when he was growing up. We used to line up. We used to watch these guys. They are dying at an extraordinarily high rate because they are all in their 90s now, and we're losing them. Within five years, I think they say, we'll have almost all of them gone. And so they are coming, and this isn't something that the GOP planned or anybody. This is These tours happen every single day, and there are private organizations that are paying for these guys to come in so they can see it. And this is a cathartic moment for them. And the president has a team of people that we, that you, the taxpayer, are paying for. And they have said, how do we inflict the most amount of pain, not on the GOP, on the people? How do we cause pain on the people? The first time we saw it was when the president was off with his, you know, billion dollar uh, vacations and uh, spending, you know, on studying pig poop and everything else. But they closed down the tours for the children at the White House. And they thought to themselves, and, and this is the way we all justified it, they thought to themselves, well, here he is, he's just trying to inflict pain on the children, so then we'll have sympathy for the children, and we'll say, oh, that's, that's wrong. They have, to have, they have to be able to go in and, um, and see the White House. So he was, he was using children, right? This is what they always do. They're using children as an image. But now this is different because now they are strong arming 90 year old World War II veterans and they no longer care if they look like they're strong arming. If you cared and you wanted to have that photo op, what they were doing was they wanted to have a photo op and have all of these veterans turn around to a camera and say, all these veterans are here and they can't see the World War II memorial. And so then what happens? Then they're on CNN and everything else as the old guys. And that's the way I think they planned it. They planned it so, okay, you close that down, then you're going to have a busload, get the cameras out there, and you're going to have all these old guys that have traveled, and you're going to have nonstop sob stories. Well, it didn't work that way because the GOP just went, and they just opened that up and said, this is nonsense. Let the old people go walk around. And everybody agreed with it. So anybody in American history... They would then say, all right, well, we lost that one. They didn't. These Marxist revolutionaries didn't. They've upped it now. Now they're putting a bigger fence around. Now they're putting armed guards around it. So now they don't care. Now it is them inflicting the pain uh, intentionally, they are spending money. The president has to pay for a group of people to sit around in a conference room and say, where can we inflict the most pain? And then when it failed, they have to go back into that meeting and spend all that money to say, okay, now what do we do? Any sane, non-psychotic person says, just open up that and let those people go. We lost that one. They didn't. They put more chips on the table. I want you to understand, you are now seeing 
what I told you about three weeks ago. I told you they have gone from nudge to shove. This is another example that they are deep in to shove. Your next step is shoot. Understand they are in to shove. Every Marxist communist revolution always ends in millions dead. Always. Without fail. Every time. We talk about the Nazis. Oh, well, they killed 6 million Jews. The Soviet Union killed 60 million. The, uh, the Chinese, it's estimated between 70 and 90 million. The Russians starved seven, starved 7 million in the Ukraine. They starved them to death. Why? To teach them a lesson. This is the beginning of teaching the American people a lesson. Don't you screw with us. I am here to tell you, if you do not begin to stand and make your voice heard and very clear, and the way you do it is through the GOP, defund the GOP, if you don't straighten up that one party, it will be too late. Defund the GOP right now. You call them and tell them, you look, you little weasel, I have had enough. We are not playing games because this other side, this progressive Marxist movement is not playing a game either. And we're running out of time. I am serious about the debt. I am serious about the debt ceiling. I am serious about you are not going to fund this. And if you decide to play games behind our backs, like John Boehner, you demand that John Boehner not just rem is removed from the speakership. Why hasn't that happened yet? But that he resigns. And everyone within the sound of my voice, if you want a free country, you have to know that the people who are going to Congress and say that they are speaking on your behalf actually do. You send a very clear message. Not another dime comes from me. Not another dime. And I mean that even with the good guys. Not another dime. You, you get this done. You raise the flag when you need help, and we'll be there by your side. But not another dime comes to anybody that has to funnel it through the GOP. They either stand now or they don't stand at all. Because that is where we're at. Warning. We are deeply into the shove mode now. And I think I have... A pretty good record of reading these guys and where they're headed. Warning. Warning.